he said to me once, he's like, you're, you're dribbling after you pee a little bit. Eh? And I was like, uh, and I was like, yeah, I am a little bit. He's like, start eating. Dude. <laughs> Dude, he was like, start, start eating regular hours. He's like, you're not eating in regular intervals. So it's like harsh on your like organs and stuff like that. That's wild. Yeah. He's like, your dick slopes to the left. It's a left sloping dick. Like, I can yeah. see that from the way you just move that. You move your little eyebrow there. It slopes left. It's a left sloping dick. You're like, holy fuck, dude. How did you know I had a dick? It is. <laughs> I'm like, it is. Yeah. <laughs> The thing is, it happens in steps. You don't just, I don't just set up a $2,000 camera and lighting. And I just bought like one thing at a time. Like, okay, how can I improve the video a little bit? How can I improve the audio a little bit? And then as you assemble pieces, you start learning about how they work. Hmm. Um, so you don't have to go all balls out and buy like 10 grand worth of equipment. You could slowly upgrade. Hmm. Like what's the thing right now that you need the most, do you think? What's the thing you need to improve the most? Laptop. Laptop. Okay, well, that's a pretty straightforward one then. Like yeah, just buy a laptop cool. with a lot of RAM. And then what? And then a phone I need as well, a new phone. What do you got? Nokia? It's yeah, Huawei. Looks <laughs> like American. Um, well, like if I'm getting a computer, I know this is going to be boring conversation. You can cut this, but if I'm no, getting, fuck it. If I'm getting a computer, like you mean by RAM? Like I see, like, <laughs> like I mean, what? just buy something that. <laughs> You're the only guest that I've had this critical warning of, like, they don't have enough RAM. I'll just tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, do I get, like, will a laptop, like a new, like, like can I get a MacBook Pro? Is that going to be good? Is that going to be good? To yeah, edit? of course. You get any kind of Mac today, those things crush, like, put Final Cut on there. It probably comes with it, actually. Like, any any Mac made after 2020 is probably, like, I don't know what the hell you have, but I'm assuming since uh, the recommended memory is not good enough, it'll be a lot better than, than what you're 20, working Dude, I bought this 2011. But what's the what's the hurdle? Like, why don't you, like, are you broke? Like, can you just not invest? Yeah, I don't money? have a lot of money, man. We're not fucking making the lira or whatever you make <laughs> over there, man. <laughs> lira in Spain. What, what year is this? 1974. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, can't you write it off as a business expense? Yeah, yeah. You need to be able to have money to write things off. You, you know, that's true. You know, the reality is, like, I was tight. Now, luckily, I'm I'm booking a few things, so I probably could actually. My next step will be will be a computer. I'm gonna get. Yeah. Well, if you need help with like technological stuff, reach out. I'll help you out with whatever. Like, thank you. Man. Small I'm, things I'm, are big. I'm, I'm I'd love to help you out. Thank you, man. Thank you. I guess we should tell people that don't know who you are. Like, what, what do you do? You make funny videos on the internet that I really enjoy. You do comedy. Uh, you have a section that says acting with only one story on it. So uh, is that <laughs> is that just taking off now? <laughs> Did you just get your first booking? I'm not technological, dude. I have a whole fucking catalog I don't put on there, man. Dude, are you sure? <laughs> dude, I know. I got I to gotta bump that up, eh? It's like working out and then you have like one video of you walking <laughs> just down to get like a beer in the corner store. Dude, um, you have three stories, like uh, three pin stories. One of them says acting. It was two weeks ago. And it says, should I have played a serial killer instead? That's the bull. <laughs> then you have event hosting. Also one story, which is just a sketch you did. And then partnership. Somehow you, I don't know, put together four stories, but that hasn't been updated in almost a year. <laughs> so should I take those down? No, don't take them down. Just update them. Like, what? What? I just don't know what. Like, what are they? What are they supposed to be? What are you doing? What? Who are you? What do you do? Fuck, man. See, like, I'm like a renegade sort of dude. Like, <laughs> you're like so, that Gen Z that you talk about in your videos. Like, I don't really want to work that much. I'm trying to get like two weeks starting vacation <laughs> at the sure. first month of my job. People always ask what you you do. I mean, I guess I'm a comedian. Like if you think about what your skills are, what what are your skills? You know, like we're, we're like I'm a jack of all trades. Okay, what, I, I think I can write a joke. All right, so I'm a stand up comic. I do sketch comedy. I do videos online, and um, subsequently from that, I've been able to act. And I do a lot of commercials. 
which I'm not on that Instagram story. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then in terms of event hosting, that was that gig I had, which was just a sketch. That was like the first um, event I've done for a company here where we've done like a week load of interviews for um, this like, it's, it's like a, 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 whatever, a festival of information for like digital creators or something like that. Okay, cool. So I was interviewing people at TIFF and stuff like that. So I, hopefully when the videos come, it'll be more filled it'll up. Make a little more sense. <laughs> I feel most people don't click on it even. You're the you're the nerd who researches, you know. People I mean, it's like first thing I see on your profile underneath your profile picture and then we go down into your videos. Like people do check stories, no? I mean, maybe I'm crazy. No, you're right, you're right. I check it if it's a hot chick and see if she has any bikini photos. Well, the one that says little sun, when you see the sun, you're like that's that's the money one right there. I don't care about all this other nonsense like it's like a sushi roll or some shit like And it's like oh, nothing. <laughs> like, what the hell? I want to see your nephews. Get, get back to you being naked. Bikini, son, and then I'll worry about what your diet is. Like, I don't give a shit what you're <laughs> eating. That's the thing, too, is branding, man. It's like, what are you saying on your page now? And it's, you know, I, my, my consistency and what I have there is a little bit jumbled, but brother. So you, you don't got to tell me about it. I mean, when people ask me, like, what's the podcast about? I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. I just talk to people that I either enjoy their content or their work. Like, I don't have a, but like, what's the niche? I'm like, I don't know. I don't have a niche. I've had like a video game developer. It was like 90. Then I've had like a guy that kills people, like a cage fighter. Then I've had you. It's like, you're the farthest thing from a cage fighter. <laughs> With know, all due respect. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying like, I don't know how to describe the pie. It's just me talking to random people, having a good conversation. I don't know. And is it doing well? It's eating dick, brother. I mean, <laughs> No, there's episodes that do well. There's episodes that don't do well. Ultimately, uh, I don't really care. I'm just going to, it's just like, I'm, I'm imagining it's just like kind of comedy. You eat dick when you start a lot of dick yeah. for many years. And you, it's like, are you getting better? Do you think you're getting better? You're asking me that. Yeah, I'm asking you a question. Do you think you're getting better? Of course. Yeah, there's no way. Of course, you're getting better. Yeah. So like, that's how I see the podcast. Like, I think I'm learning. I think I'm getting better. I think we're figuring out how to do clips better. Like, and I think the episodes that I've made so far have been quality. And I think if it takes five, 10, 20 years for someone to recognize it and it gets a little bit more attention, so be it. But even if it doesn't, I've succeeded. I've had so many awesome conversations with people. Like you can't take that away from me. That's, so that's how I look at it. What do you do for work besides that? Uh, so I'm content creator, um, digital marketing. So I do make videos and, and YouTube strategies and stuff for like companies. Okay. But I used to have an electrical engineering degree, so I used to be a, an engineer. Mm, that's why you got a good setup for sound and everything. I would love to tell you that's the reason, but it's actually not. It's like I, I engineering was so boring to me. Like <laughs> to be all with to be honest, like engineering was very boring. It's not like I do have some love for electronics, but it's not like that's not where it comes from. Okay. Is that a picture of you in the back? What is that? Oh yeah, that is Dude, <laughs> crushing some ice cream. <laughs> No, it's a, it's a hot dog I'm eating. Oh, it's a hot dog. That's yeah, a great my, photo. My mom got me that. That's, That's dope. Crazy. That's crazy. I'm going to put that away. That's weird. For really people that are listening, he's crushing. He's a five-year-old version of Andrew crushing a fucking wiener. Just My buddy looked at that and was like, you look so innocent, man. <laughs> what happened? So how did you get into it? How did you start doing comedy? How did you start making videos? Tell me about it. I was in advertising for six years before. I was like account services. So I worked on Rogers. I worked on um, Tropicana, Pepsi. Well, Pepsi, uh, Tropicana is Pepsi. Um, Gatorade. And um, I started, I didn't like it that much. And uh, I always wanted to try, uh, you know, comedy. So I took an improv, I took a Toastmasters. Do you know Toastmasters? I do know what Toastmasters is, yeah. Because I couldn't public speak. I always was like, I want to be able to public speak well. I was so awkward and uncomfortable. I took a Toastmasters and it was fun. I did one in Spain, actually, a Toastmasters. Oh, something. shit. Dope. They have them there. They have them there. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking, like, if I were to do comedy or try eating dick on stage, like, how would I do that here? It would be so tough. Like, I need to find, like, an English-speaking place to, to speak in front of people. They must have English open mics there, no? <sighs> I don't know. It's an, it's an idea. I'll look into it. But carry on. No, so uh, so then I, then I took an uh, improv class. And I was like, oh, that was fun. Okay. So I started doing that. Then I did a stand up. You know, I was 28. I think I did my first set. Wow. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 28, I did my first set. And, that, and it was okay. 
And then I was coming from work and going and doing open mics. And I thought to myself, thank God I have a job because all these people are psychotic. Right. I was in these open mics with these like new, uh, just released from prison, mental institution sort of <laughs> open micers. And you think, wow, this is, I'll do it as a hobby because this is just crazy. And then I went to a marketing conference for Pepsi. And, I'm, and, I, and this guy was hosting the event. His, his name was James Cunningham. And he was hilarious. I was like, this guy was, he was crushing it. Crushing in a Toastmaster event. No, it was a Pepsi marketing event. Oh, Pepsi marketing event. Sorry. Yeah. For work, for work. So I saw him there and then he gets off stage and everyone's talking to like the marketing people that were speaking. I went over to him and I was like, dude, like you're hilarious. And I'm like, I just started doing comedy. And he was like, yo, take my number, bro. We'll do some sets. And I, he got me to write for the, he was like, hey, I'll get you to write some jokes for me. I think he was just throwing me some cash to be nice because I was so green at the time. And I went to his house to do some work and it was this really nice house downtown, like right off of Chinatown. And I was like, dude, this is pretty sick. He's like, yeah, I do like corporate gigs. And he didn't tell me the amount, but now I realize like you can do a corporate gigs for like IBM and stuff. You're getting like five grand for like one gig. And he was on Eat Street TV. And I was like, okay, so this was the first time I saw a guy in Canadian comedy who's unknown, who's earning about like probably 150 to 200 to possibly 300 a year, you know? And so I was like, fuck, it's doable. And he was like, just quit your job. And he would say that to me. <laughs> yeah. And then, so I, I did eventually like six years later, I even had my bosses being like, just go man and, and, and do it. And so I just tried to do it. And then, you know, it's taken me leaving the, leaving the industry 31, I was 31 and now I'm 37 and I'm just now like feeling, okay, this is, um, things are doing, getting I'm getting stuff. I'm getting bookings for commercials. I'm getting gigs. I'm doing comedy shows. And like, you know, it's just, it takes 10 years, man, to, to try that. That's crazy. I, I didn't know you started so late. I mean, that, that gives hope for anyone. Cause actually before this podcast, the person I talked to last week was a comedian in the UK mm. and he also started pretty late. And it's, it's, it's crazy to think you can start at 28 and still find a way to it. Well, l- you're luckily, committed to it, right? Well, luckily with comedy, I mean, you don't need to, it's not like a rapper. I don't need to be young. Right. Right. So and same with you. It's like you're doing a podcast. You're not going to, you're going to, you can do it start at 60 and find a niche of people True. who are like-minded. If you're saying something, if you're saying, you have to say something. So if you start saying stuff that you believe in, you're going to find people who are interested in what you're saying. All right. Russia for me, let's be honest. They're doing the, they're doing really well. I'm, I'm on the Russia side. Uh, I think I can make a pro Russia podcast and just run with it. Okay. Yeah. Get all those fucking weirdos to come on, make a little fucking weird Alex Jones type cult around Russia invading countries. Yeah. But then you're Thoughts. pegged into a corner there. So then once they all get excited, bam, I throw a fucking curveball. Just kidding. I'm with Ukraine. JK. Right. Yes. Yes. Here's another 40 bill. I'm with you boys. Let's go get it. You're talking Underdog about story. The, you're talking about the war of NATO aggression right now, right? It would be fun. I mean, looks like you just came up with my title for my first fucking, <laughs> my first hour special. Well, you know what? I know you're joking, but the thing is, what's funny is that you'll see comics doing these jokes that are like in those realms. And it's like, well, you're going to get those. You have to think, you have to think about what I didn't consider when I was younger mm-hmm. is that actually what I'm saying is impacting people. Sure. So, you know, I used to just say, okay, what's funny? Right. And now it's not what's funny because I could do a lot of shit that's funny that's I don't believe in or that's going to negatively like people really? won't understand okay. people won't understand the humor. You know like mm-hmm. I did I did we used to do vegan protests. That was how we first got I was with the troupe called Live Dudes. <laughs> amazing, you know, yeah. Did you do yes. those? Did you see those at all? No, I watched the videos of course. Yeah, yeah, I saw those. Those are amazing. So, but they're amazing. They're they're funny. They're funny. I mean, they're funny. Yeah. They're, but, but I look back and I go, "Oh, I think a lot of people missed like the point because we either had the vegans saying you guys are pricks or we had like right wingers being like, you can get those snowflake bitches. And I'm like, I don't want to make it political. I just, we're just kind right. of, we're just kind of defending a small business that was being attacked by what we saw, like unnecessary group of people. It wasn't political. It was like there was, there was a McDonald's across the street they could have gone to, but they chose a small business that was serving meat. And it's obviously obvious why, because McDonald's, they, wouldn't do shit and uh sure. but so that's what we saw and and so nowadays I, I gotta be careful about what i say because 
you know, even just joking about the war, Russian stuff. It's like, I don't want to make my stuff political. And I was, I'll make, I make a joke and someone will be like, well, he's now pro this and pro that. And you're just, yeah. So you gotta, you gotta be aware of what you're saying, you know? It's so tough because like I get both sides of it and I've heard both people, both sides being argued. Like in one sense, like your comedy is, is what it is. It's like, you should not be responsible for someone misinterpreting one of your jokes. That's going to happen regardless of what you say. You could say like the most obvious thing ever. You can be like, the cloud is blue. And some guys are like, yeah, tell that cloud. But like, they're going to take a political side to you saying a cloud is blue. So it's like, am I really going to have to continue tailoring jokes to appease every person that doesn't get it, right? It's like, isn't there like, there's like a fine line, right? Well, you shouldn't tailor it to people. You shouldn't be like, I have to try so hard. Okay. Yes, you're always, someone's going to pull whatever they want. You can make a joke about belts and someone's going to be like, my friend killed themselves with belts. Why would you say that? But (laughs) you know what, man? You You damn well better try to make it, make the premise as clear as possible as to what you're sure. saying and be careful as to the jokes you're making. Because like, look, man, in our society right now, it's crazy what's accepted and what's banned. Cardi B, right. is, Cardi B's held up as some feminist icon and she's twerking her ass and talking about having sex with guys and selling her thing and drug. It's like, this is what, what, what a, a role model is and she's completely fine. She has no consideration as to what she's doing to children and young girls or she does and doesn't give a crap and thinks it's, it's, it's like sexual liberation, you know, skewed feminist perspective. So I, I do think, and, and I'll even look back, dude, at stuff like Eminem was rapping about when I was, and I was like, that's bad. That's bad for kids. Sure. Fair enough. Do you remember your first joke? Cause you said, uh, you said you did your first set at like 28. Do you remember your first joke? I'm so curious. bad, dude. You want to, you want to know my, my first joke? Yeah, please. It was, uh, the older you are, the more in pain you look when you read. So I did an impression <laughs> of my dad looking at his cell phone being like. Having that's not bad. That's not bad. He's all right. Yeah, I guess so. I see where you got it. That's not bad. Hey, for yeah, a first a joke. Joke. I like that you remember it though. That's always good. Because it was, you know what? It's not the first joke actually. It was the first joke that kind of worked where you could be like, ah, okay. I got to laugh. Yeah, like the first joke I wrote was probably uh, – something horrible that was like uh i don't even remember they weren't even jokes they were just like premises and stuff you're kind of premises, going on yeah and you're, going, and you're like hey you know you know and your friend i think one of them was i did a sketch actually you know one of them i said was uh i had a buddy who um you know that friend who like wishes you fail you like tell him you do something good you're like hey i just got a job he's like oh you that's amazing bro that's- yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and well, actually and that that was a character i did and now I just did a sketch recently in the past year about that. But um, yeah, you're just kind of for five years in stand up. You're, you're just eating it for five years. It takes five years. That's what years. I imagine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what the, that's not, and that's not, I'm not scared of a, like a process for anything. I, I don't mind the long run, as you heard me allude to the 10 year pod plan. Like, I don't mind the process. It's just like, is this really the best? I don't want to say use of my time because that sounds really pretentious, but is this the, is this what, I should be devoting all my time to, you know, that's the question. Like I, I love comedy, but is it to that extent where I like, I want to eat dick for five years and then to win is to travel a lot and barely be at home. Like there's all, there's downsides. It's like, yeah, of course you can kill. feels good to probably crush a room. I would imagine, but yeah. I don't know. It's, You're in right. the, it's been a Mac mind for years, right? It's, it's not a fully, Oh, I've made it. It's like, Oh, there's also downsides to this. You're right. As to think about what you want to, designate your time to because i'm in the realm now where i'm pulling away from stand-up oh really well because what's what's the point in doing well in front of 60 people when you can make a video and reach like thousands hopefully right and then you can come back to stand-up when you have a bigger audience right is that and the yeah, game plan or is I mean, it to do more videos well, well actually do you love stand-up as much as you love like sketch sketches and creating videos I love stand up a lot, but uh, it's kind of nowadays it's sort of a useless skill. I don't know why. I don't. I don't mean to say really? that. But, well, it's like you see these TikTokers; they're selling out places, and like they're they're fine stand up. Some of them are, are good stand up. Some of them are are not good at all. But in the end, it doesn't matter. Their audience just wants to see them and uh, interact with them, have a Q and A after, and 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 the show's still fine because they could still put people on who are good stand ups and still have like music and it's kind of a party and it's like you know you 
what's better having an audience of um a hundred thousand on on social media or being able to crush two hours of like amazing stand-up right the audience is always better sure it, but the the trade-off is like are you gonna love the thing that you've made as much right is that the trade-off because like i i have thought like when i first started making videos i'll give you an example when i first started making videos my videos were about like fifa it was a video game and I grew a bit of an audience there. One of my friends that we made a podcast together ended up getting a job for EA. Another one is now working for another football video game company. And that was like, that's probably as high as you can go in terms of success on on that in that niche. But like to continue was kind of the downfall because the game became very boring. I mean, I don't know. You probably played FIFA. It's a horrendous product. It's one of the worst video games, sports games ever made. And it's like, you could get an audience. I could still figure out how to do an audience. I still have, I don't know, 20 something thousand subscribers on YouTube for a FIFA channel. But I have to play this game that I fucking hate or make content about this game that I don't like. To me, like that wouldn't really be making it. Like I wouldn't be happy. Even if I was making an income, like it would just be such a soul crushing. It'd be the same as having like one of the office jobs that you hated probably. It wouldn't be fun. Yeah, but then you got to f- just find something to make that you enjoy making content about. Right. So that's what I'm saying is, is making videos on par with like enjoyment fulfillment as stand up for you. Yeah, it can be, man. It's like it's just a different feel. Like stand up's more of a rush. You just kind of go up there and you're with like I did, you know Mr. Lewin from Toronto? Uh I don't think so, no. He's he does like he's funny, man. He's got a good content. He does a lot of like memes and stuff on his page and just funny content on his page. And then he th- and then he started doing stand up and he's new word of stand up, but he's still very funny. And he had a show last night in like the East End, and like uh, he's it's it's fun as hell, man. Like there's a room of like 250 people. It's not my crowd. It's like more urban crowd. They're like, yo, fam, this guy like crazy dog. Like yo, <laughs> Toronto man's in there. Yo, what? Man, yo. they're like smoking weed inside. I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Like, is this legal? And like, you know, and uh, but it's amazing. It's like that's it. You're getting immediate reaction from a huge crowd of people. Um, but the other thing is, is like, I don't want to be a touring comic. I don't want to be in Sault Ste. Marie New Year's Eve. And I don't want to do these right. things. I'd rather spend, my goal would be to make a TV show. I write my ass off and shoot it and then put it out there for the world and then leave stand up as like a hobby on the side just to have fun. Larry David-esque. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Larry David. Kinda Larry David kind of did that, right? Seinfeld also to a certain extent. I mean, he still does some stand up, but not as much. Yeah, but Larry David was never really good at stand up. Like Seinfeld was a No, he was Yeah, Seinfeld but but the I was really disappointed. I was actually just having a conversation with a friend about this. I went to see Seinfeld live in like I would say late two thousand like two thousand ten ish, let's say. And man, he I paid a hundred bucks to see him in Toronto and half of his material was material that he used in the show like thirty years ago. Mm. And I heard it. I I was a fan of the show. I was a fanatic of the show. And when I heard him use like the same material or half the show was the same material that I heard from the show, I was so, I don't know, I felt robbed a little bit. I'm like, dude, come on, man. Like, Well, he's an old school guy, so he believes in crafting jokes over 20 years. Whereas other guys- making like <laughs> Nokia flip phone jokes in like 2015. Like, bro, I love you, but stop, bro. Stop. <laughs> I know, I know. And that's why, you know, he criticizes newer comics because they'll have a new hour each year. Each year, yeah. And I think, but that's the other thing too, is I think audiences would rather see the new unpolished than old, really polished. Yeah. Well, yeah. It depends who the audience is. Like I would imagine if you're fucking, I don't know, hardcore fan, like why would I want to see the same material? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe you would want, I guess some, some comedians have like go-to jokes or stories that they repeat, but like that's, that's different than doing half of your show, 30 year old material. No, no, it's true. But I think, you know, Jay Leno is the same. He doesn't, release any specials because he just constantly does similar stuff evolves the material he has and they're they're just old school so yeah i, I know i hear what you're saying i probably wouldn't go see seinfeld anymore because i've done the same and i've seen this jokes over but uh i've fucking i respect the shit out of the guy and mostly for the incredible TV show is like the most groundbreaking yeah. comedy ever agreed i have a kramer poster in my and still in my place in canada so like i'm a, I'm a fanatic um speaking of specials if I may do a sneaky little host transition here, you're working on yours soon. You're working on a. I shot it. I'm just waiting for the. Oh. the edit. Yeah, yeah. It's an hour. We're 
It's like 30 minutes or 40 minutes, something like that. So uh, on YouTube, I'm going to just put it on YouTube. You know how it is now. Just oh. for free. I'm excited. How was the process of, of filming that? Like how, how long have you been working on that? That's been, so that's going to be material that's I've been working on for, uh, you know, that eight, nine years, 10 years kind of stuff that. <laughs> oh shit. You know, well, I mean, in the sense that like for the first five years, you probably don't use after the five year point, you're not using anything from that first five years six year set and then you start to be able to write a joke and then so for the past three years four years five years i've been doing these bits and so i wanted to put them out finally um and so it's good what's it's, the yeah. deal with barack obama <laughs> yeah 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 you ever go to your high school teacher and yeah yeah they do. yeah carry on sorry sorry yeah, <laughs> no it's true so uh so yeah, I just wanted- how long have you been polishing that? Like, have you been doing that? Like, that's like sets you've been working on like weekly for years, or how does how does that work? I guess I understand how like a one year, two year process works. You have certain material and you're adding on slowly to it, and by the end you finish and you go on tour. But if you're working on it for what you say five to eight years, how have you been strategically taking parts out and turning that into a special? Um. Yeah, I mean it's, it's it's so hard to come up with stand up material, and I'm not good at generating new content, probably because I'm not doing it that much. But uh, you kind of find a bit that you just all of a sudden stumble across, and that becomes like your closer. So I had like two kind of closers that were like five minutes each, ten minutes, or something like that, and you're kind of doing them for like years and years. That's how it kind of works. You always go back to them because they're just tried and true. They work in every environment. So yeah, you, you kind of slowly hone them. You're putting in new stuff. And I was, you know, I have, I talk about my dad who's from Argentina. I worked at a Korean restaurant. I have a bit about that, but then I talk about Toronto and the the situations in Toronto, like going to a Chinese restaurant in Toronto, the homeless people and stuff like that. It's, and so you just eventually got to the point where I'm like, I'm getting sick of this content. I need to put it out. And I, and then I filmed it and I'm trying to just build new stuff, evolve and move on from it. So. How's the editing process been? Has it been tough to cut it down? And I got a guy to help me who's like a producer here. His name's Millen. He's a, he's a good guy. He shot a lot of specials in Toronto and Canada. Um, he's he's working on it now, so he's he's been editing it himself. And uh, oh, you don't want to you don't want to be a part of it as much? Not really. Not not, not really interesting. You know what, man? There's uh, there was only one show that was probably two shows that were good. I did. I shot three, so it's. I did two takes of each joke, so I'm not going to sit there and be like, I go through the thing. It's fucking trying to do it. He's got. He's a pro at it, so I'm going to just see. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to see. Okay, if there's anything weird, if my neck looks weird, I got a phlegm ball in my side of my mouth. I'll probably ask him to change the edit. But cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's a pro, so I'm just let him do it, and then he'll probably send me maybe two options. I don't know how he works, and then I'll hopefully get it out as soon as possible. That's dope. I'm I'm really looking forward to, to. I've seen some of your clips. Obviously, you posted clips also from your some of your um, stage time, right? Not too much. Of, uh, not too. No, much. I'm pretty sure I've seen a few. Yeah, yeah, I posted a few, but nothing crazy. I don't. I don't. Um, I didn't want to burn these jokes, so I didn't. Yeah, I, that's true. That's true. But are you are you still doing the Every Dude podcast? Every dude? Oh, with uh, Packer. Or, with whatever, dude. Yeah. Bro, dude, yeah. we didn't even do the podcast. That's a joke. So we just shoot. Oh, it's like, just a. It's yeah. just fake fake clips of a podcast yeah that That's comes classic. from like every guy having a podcast so we did uh just the bro dude guys being like dude like fucking organ meat bro organ meat or whatever yeah 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 so. i was actually also curious about this during covid did your channel blow up a bit more because you had a lot of like content making fun of the nonsense that was uh going on in canada was that a big boost i know like Money Buys Happiness podcast like blew up during COVID because they were basically talking against all the stupid stuff that Canada was doing. Yeah, um, uh, it did. It did absolutely. That was the first big uh, pop I started getting was really COVID and doing these things. And guy, those guys from Money Buys Happiness, those Anthony and Ernesto, they were sharing. Uh, they were sharing the content, man, and they had me on and stuff. And uh, on their podcast, yeah, that was the first big thing because. Um, yeah, I look back at that time, man. It was it was craziness what was going on, and uh, it was wild. We didn't do lost. enough. No, we, we didn't do enough. I think three more boosters. I think we've been all right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we shut down for an extra year, maybe we could have stopped it. 
So I did the stuff like that. And then, but you know, what's interesting is I did that and I started getting a lot of pops and doing well. And I was talking about what I, you know, I, I believe I haven't looked at the sketches in a, in a while. They're still there, but, um, I stopped doing them because I was getting people who were following me being like, you know, like a guy with like fucking two swords crossed and like an eagle <laughs> flying being like, fuck yeah, these fucking, pr-. and I'm like, do I want to hey, come to a rally this weekend? Fuck yeah, yeah, brother. Exactly. And I'm like, fuck, everything's so political. And do I want to be like COVID guy? Do I want to be political guy? And there are some things that are should stay social, and I think COVID shouldn't have been political. It was a it was a virus. It was a state of health matter, but it got political right from the get go. Um, but the problem was is that both sides, the right and the left, fear was driving everything. So the left was scared of the virus, and they're wearing masks, and the right was scared of the vaccine, and so both sides had fear and that when there's fear it's all emotion and so people were just blowing up and so i would go look i was losing commercials and i was you know my agent was telling me that the production houses were complaining about the stuff i had really wow yeah they wanted me to sign like a morality clause like that i wouldn't release what offensive content and i would ask my agent like what do you what is this morality clause i don't know really and i'm like well figure it out because i'm not signing something (laughs) right the fuck is that just in Canada or is that an America thing as well? What? I've never, heard, I've never heard of a morality clause or anything like that. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I never even saw the clause, to be honest. And I just, uh, I didn't want to sign it. But, uh, you know, you, you, you're like, am I going to, am I going to die on this hill? Or am I going to, am I going to be, I don't even die on this hill, but I'm like, am I going to be like COVID guy? I, I don't right. want to be COVID guy. I have, I have an, I have an opinion about COVID, but I'm not, I'm a right wing. I'm not left wing. I'm not a conservative. Definitely not. Cause I, I had people being like, thank God you're doing conservative comedy. I'm like, I'm not a conservative. And then I'm, I'm also like, you know, I don't know if I'm left wing. I pull f- from both sides, I think. And I think right now Same, yeah. our political situation is horrible. I don't think any politician is looking out for the interest of the people really. Well, it's always been the case. Unfortunately, that's why for me, politics is kind of a, I don't know, a moot point. I just, I go back to the, if it's funny, it's funny. I, uh, like when I made the video, like we're not doing enough. We should start AK 47 ing people that don't want the vaccine. Like some people really like got excited about that video. Like, Oh my God, th- that's exactly what's happening. Like, obviously that's not what, that's not what's happening. I'm not saying fucking Canada is a former communist Eastern European country, but I just thought it was funny. Like how people are going crazy. I, like, I didn't think too much of it. I also had the same problem where like, do I want to be a guy that makes videos about fucking just one side of it. Like I literally wanted to make the opposite video, but like the stupid shit, the right says, right. But like you, you don't have a successful page if you're that guy, or maybe you do, but like, it's very tough. It goes back to the niche thing in a weird way. Like you kind of need a hardcore, little bit of a niche following that. Like this, you're that guy. This is what you do. South Park is a pretty good job of ripping on both sides. Yeah. It's doable. It's, it's hard to do, but there, yeah, but there are things that are, it's just like, yeah, in certain situations, uh, I guess you would say the left is easier to make fun of because they're doing a, like a lot of crazy stuff in terms of recently. Uh, but that's recently, the thing. Recently. Wait, that's what. Yeah, recently. Yeah, the pendulum it swings. Remember mm-hmm. when the right was doing crazy shit like five, ten years ago? Like literally, fucking <laughs> that were they were much easier to make fun of. But the right is doing stupid, crazy stuff too. Like look at Texas, man. Still it's, are correct, it's, but it's, the left is now. I agree. But like the left has now come into the equation as with their own crazy shit. So like now there's a little bit more of a dichotomy. The pendulum swung a little bit this way. And now in a few years, it's going to swing that way. Yeah. It's going to keep swinging back and forth. I had a joke I do in stand up where I say the biggest problem is extremism. And extremism comes on both sides. Exactly. So, so extremism on the right is you go to Texas, you can't get an abortion. But you can have an AK-47, and once the baby's born, then you can shoot the baby when it's on your <laughs> property. You can kill the baby once it's born on your – and it's like, that baby was on my property. <laughs> but then yeah, right. extremism on the left and it is excessive tolerance where we have a teacher in Oakville with triple Z breasts teaching shop class – 
and they they fired him with pay because it's it's his human rights to wear breasts on into a high school. Amazing, amazing. I mean, it's it writes itself. It writes itself. It's crazy. I mean, it's like like, I I had a bit about him just sitting at home crushing like like peanuts with his like tits as he's like (laughs) old pay leave. He's like like crushing cans of beer. But, but that's the thing. It's like, dude, like the, the, we're in a we're in a place now where it's like extremism is, you know, horrible. In Canada, we have this excessive tolerance issue that's crazy, and um, it's, hey, it's come crazy to Spain, way. brother. Come to Spain. Come. Spain, come do they do they legalize like bestiality? I saw like a, I saw a six buzz post. About- <laughs> then you know it's good shit. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I have not had that Google search. I've been kind of avoiding the. Is it illegal to fuck a pig search on my Google? <laughs> I, I'll get back to you on that one once I go on DuckDuckGo. <laughs> on, uh, on, I don't know, Viber, whatever the fuck it, what does QAnon use? I'll send you a, I don't know. a text on an undisclosed location. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, Spain has its own problems for sure. But like overall, like it's much more chill here. Or maybe it's just because I don't understand half the fucking Paul. I mean, it's just like any place. If you don't really invest in politics, you don't really think too much of it. Like Spain has their own sets of issues, I'm sure. Yeah, well, it fit, well, I was there a long time ago, but they were super chill on like everything. I, I remember I was working at a restaurant and they were doing the whole like sexual harassment training. And they were like, you know, here you got to be respecting women and you know, you got to do this. And then he goes, okay, okay. Hey, hey Maria! <laughs> and just walk by the office, and she pokes in. She's like, "Oh, gracias!" Like she was wearing a, light, a nice skirt. He's like, "Oh, muy bien, muy bien." And he's like, "Anyways, he's talking to me." And like, it was funny there. Like they hadn't been warped by feminism yet, so women still right. appreciated the fact that they looked well. And actually, the women there were tough as nails. Like if you tried to hit on them and they weren't down, they'll be like, "I'll kill you." But, <laughs> right, but, but they also respected the fact of like being told they look hot, and they 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 appreciated you trying to hit on them and compliment them. It's back to what we talked about: extremism of of any side of of this equation is bad. Like you don't want to be absolutely afraid to look at another human being, but you also don't want to go go up there and smack her on the ass. Like there's some sort of be here. We can we can there's all enjoy middle. this we area. The middle, there's man. a middle. Yeah, let's Your get podcast should be guy. called the middle man the middle it should be like i just get all my guests to like become the worst kind of people like the the devil's advocates like the indecisive people that's that expression right like there's a special place in hell for people that are like indecisive like in, it's like dante quote i can't remember but yeah that quote like if you, there was like a special people a special place in hell for uh those those who remain silent i don't think that's the quote but it was no no it it, it it was inside that was a different one it was like people that are like uh indecisive or people that like it's not obviously didn't say play devil's advocate a lot but something along those lines i'm like one of those dudes like I, I don't mean devil's advocate. That's a mistake. I mean middle ground as to like your your ideas and stuff. You know, like we need we need uh, we we need to to help the poor and provide education. But you don't want a welfare state. You know, you want to be able people to make money, and you want people to be able to do very good things in society. You you don't want people who have one billion dollars of of wealth, like thirty billion with dollars you. of wealth. You know, so there, I mean, middle ground of of like ideas, middle ground ideologies, ah, ideologies. Okay. Not not like don't have an opinion on anything. Of course, your opinion is that things should remain in the middle. How do you hit on a woman? Yes, you go and approach her and you talk to her. You're not forcing yourself on this girl. You know what I mean? Like that's what that's what I mean. Do you want to hear the worst pickup line that's ever been uh, that I've ever seen in my life? It happened actually a few days ago. A friend of mine was visiting. Um, this was a female came to us, a pickup line from a female. And that that moment actually changed my whole perception of like what a good opener is. And like I stopped thinking like, okay, I'll just say hi to a person. Like let's see what happens, right? She came up to us a little bit drunk. I would say decent level of drunk, three dudes by herself, brave. Now she understands how difficult the other way is. Like it's a very scary situation. She was decent looking, presented herself well. And she goes up to us and she's like, I have a question. All right. Yeah. Let's go ahead. The floor is yours. Are you guys gay? We're like, no. Oh, so where are you from? 
nice little <laughs> nag. It's called a nag. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck was that? Are you crazy? That's your opener? And then Come on, happened? man. And then what happened? <sighs> then uh, we were still nice enough to continue the conversation. Like, yeah, yeah, we're from, what are my friends from Amsterdam? My friend like from England. Yeah, like, where are you from? Oh, I'm Dutch. Oh, great. She was very interested in one of my friends. She was literally trying to bang him with, with her eyes. Great. And uh, <laughs> we sat down. She invited her friend over. We talked. She got drunker by the as the evening progressed. Um, my friend was engaged, so like once she tried to sit on his lap, he's like, "No, no, no, sorry, like, got to draw a line here. Like, uh, this, it was nice talking to you, but like, I'm not, I'm engaged." She continued to stay there, continued to be somewhat uh, flirtatious, despite my guy saying that he was engaged. I know. Hashtag all women are trash. Am I right, my guy? Uh, and then she spilled her drink on him because uh, she was a little drunk. Uh, she just was holding a cocktail like, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. And then we're like, all right, it's probably time to call it a night. I don't think this is going to get any better. So we left. She wasn't attractive, was she? No, she was decent looking. She was oh, just like drunk. She was interested in my friend that had, it was engaged. She was sloppy a little bit. She spilled drinks on like, if, if it was the other way around. Just think about it that way. It would have ended even quicker. Like we would have dipped even earlier. If we yeah. were girls and guys did this, it'd be kind of a, a different vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this in Valencia this happened? This is in Spain, Valencia, yeah. Was she Spanish? She was Dutch. She was Dutch, okay. She's blonde Dutch. How do you friend, yeah, how do you do you meet did you meet people there? Do you have friends there or what? Yeah, yeah. Um, so first, I've been here for six months now. Uh, what I love about this place, one of the big reasons I love this place, it's very social. It's super easy to meet people. There's something that I wish, I mean, there was maybe there's more in Toronto, but in smaller cities in Canada, most certainly not. Language exchanges. You go to language exchanges where people are trying to learn a language, whether it's Italian, French, uh, English, Spanish, people from all over the world come and then Spanish locals come as well. And you just sit down and you just start talking with people. Oh, hey, where are you from? Oh, what well, like what, what language are you trying to learn? Usually, you know, if I'm fortunate, I will find a nice Latina that wants to learn English. I'd be like, mommy, no te preocupes. Vamos a hablar inglés. We start going off and then, yeah, that's the dream. And that's how I met most of my friends. A lot of Latinos, a lot of Spanish people, a lot of people from all over the world. Okay, so you meet them there. And then, like, what do you, what do, you do there then? You go out because you work online, right? I work fully online. I'm fully remote. But like if I meet someone at a language exchange, they're, you know, we exchange numbers or whatever. And from that point on, like whatever, if, if you want to play like soccer, if you want to, there's a, there's a football team. If you want to watch a game, you want to go to another bar, people invite you to events. Like it's very social. Like even today before recording this podcast, I had two requests, one to play basketball and one to go to the beach. Like there's always something going on. That's, and it's that. beautiful weather. It's beautiful. But it's, it's a mix of everybody, like who's there? A mix of everyone. It, it's all who you like, I guess, I mean, technically you could go to like more like touristy slash like, I want to say white people events where it's like just fucking people that are foreigners that are coming in and you want to hang out with only English people. There's bars that are mostly English people, but it's whatever you, you want in your experience. You can go and find it. It's, people are really nice. If you just learn a little bit of Spanish, like they're very welcoming. Yeah. What are the local Valencians like? Uh, Valencian people there, they, all, they speak their own language, by the way, they Val, Valencian is a, a language as well. So they all speak that along with Catalan, Spanish. It? It's similar to Catalan. Some, some will say it's like almost identical. Others will say it's similar. I have no idea to be honest. Uh, but Spanish people in general, super nice. Like I'm, what I'm really surprised always is how nice, like the random person is like at the, like I go to the bakery and it's like, I've been there a few times. And as soon as I've like, I don't know, the fifth trip, she's like, Oh, like I've seen you a lot. Like, like, are you new here? I'm like, actually, I live across the street. She's like, oh, really? Where are you from? They start, small talk is way more enjoyable, I feel. I don't know. I don't, I didn't get that live in Canada. Maybe, maybe it's different. No, Can, Canadians are polite, but we're very shy. We're the British. The British are very cold. The Spanish, the Spanish are open, man. Like, they're very friendly. Like, um, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they like, you'll be eating in a park and someone will walk by and, and you'll, they'll be like, a bon provecho. Like, they'll say, like, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, or or you'll you'll I noticed in Barcelona you'd be at like a doctor's office and people would walk in and they'd be like Buenas tardes, Buenas tardes. They're saying yes. good afternoon to everybody who's sitting right. in the thing. It's more of a community, right? Like uh, that's how I would describe it. That's and that's what I've been missing a lot of my life because I was born in, in Eastern Europe in Serbia and I've kind of had that for many years. I've had that urge to go back and kind of reinvigorate 
my my I, what I what I felt like I was missing, and I found everything that I have been missing here. It's also extremely affordable. The weather is really good. The it's affordable. Really the good. rents the rents good. I mean, Dude, buddy. I, I mean, what I, I can, can get for can I come visit you? Of course, absolutely. Come on down. If you're in Spain, you all you have a place to stay. I'll give you my guest room. Oh man! All right, all right. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! This guy's like. Shit, write that down. Well, dude, I'm <laughs> going paper. to uh, – I'm going to go uh, – I go to Romania sometimes and then I'm going to – my mom lives in England. Um, Romania. May I ask what the – that was I work show. with some guys who I have some really good friends there and then have a business. Tate? That, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew Tate. Oh, Tate. Yeah, I know. He's there. You and Tate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot he's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be so I, jokes. I helped him get out of jail actually. Yeah, I'm actually really good into Romanian laws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. well, why Romania? Yeah, with some friends, yeah, go on. I have some friends there, and then uh, really, really close friends, and then um, we they have a business that I'm kind of helping them. Trying to, we're going to start it in Canada. We're working on some funding and stuff like that now. Oh, so dope. That's a side gig I'm doing. Yeah, keeping that a secret or like off the wreck. Uh no, I'm not keeping it a secret. It's called. It's just. It's a whole other like part of my life that it's i don't know if we want to get if we're at 45 minutes i told you i have 46 minutes of hard out so <laughs> <laughs> shit all right well, let's try to time it out so the moment you reveal your business the pot ends <laughs> the business is called roya it's uh it's crazy enough it's it's like a face reading business Whoa, um, interesting. yeah it's like physiognomy so yeah i've been doing it for like six years on the uh, uh, for fun um, the guy who's the founder has been doing it for like 40 years. He's one of the best in the, he is the best in the world. Um, the reason that sounds I, very on brand for Romania, I must say, I must say that's very, <laughs> they are more into that stuff than, yeah, for than sure. But the West is picking up huge and we used oh, to, is it? Yeah. we used to have like, they used to come and do it in Spain, the stuff. And, and we have courses here. We have a pretty decent uh, group of people who have been taking the courses here and, I have, I have comics here who are in it and like taking the, Oh, dope. And it. dope. Yeah, dude. Cause once you start to do it, you're like realizing that how we move and how we uh, think and stuff and the muscles work, it all affects our, uh, our faces, you know? So, uh, so it's, it's, we can Fa- talk face about reading. It. Yeah. Does that mean like, just like understanding what someone is like when you're looking at their face? What I'm, Maybe yeah, yeah, it's here. like understanding what like someone, so what someone's personality is. Their personality is reflected reflected in people's faces. So like, uh, you know, yeah, like, so you can. See I would say I've become pretty decent at that. I've talked to like hundreds, hundred people. Like I'm, I think I'm a relatively good judge of character just through this podcast. And you know, you'll notice that you'll get an impression when you meet someone, and you'll think, huh, this guy seems nice, or he seems weird, and that's we all have. A, a, a genetic capability to identify certain faces, but you know the guy who's the founder is at the point where he can look at someone's face and say, "Look, get, get your kidney checked out," because he can see like really wow, holy in shit, face and stuff. And like I've seen him talk to myself and others about stuff. You know, he said to me once, he's like, "You're you're dribbling after you pee a little bit," eh? and I was like, uh, "And I was like, yeah, I am a little bit." He's like, "Start eating, dude." <laughs> Dude, he was like, start start eating regular hours. He's like, you're not eating in regular intervals. So it's like oh, harsh weird. on your like organs and stuff like that. That's wild. Yeah. He's like, your dick slopes left. It's a left sloping dick. Like, yeah. I can see that from the way you just moved that. You moved your little eyebrow there. It slopes left. It's a left sloping dick. You're like, holy fuck, dude. How did you know I had a dick? It is. <laughs> like, it is. Yeah. <laughs> How did you assume my gender, bro? Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. What's exactly. going on? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, like, uh, so it's it's interesting, man. It's interesting stuff. Um, if you're on the side of the pond, of course, you're you're welcome. Welcome to come. Yeah, 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 definitely, man. So, uh, so I'm sometimes there. I see my mom in England. So, uh, so yeah, it's. Uh, I, How's I your Spanish? Oh, it's okay. Más o menos. Más o menos. Very good. Very Tengo good. Tengo que practicar. Thing. Yes, you do. You do have to practice a little yeah. bit. You sound very gringo, and I know you're not gringo because your dad's from. Argentina. No, I'm, I'm gringo, man. No, Just your dad's from. You can't be. No, no, dude, dude. Hey, hey. Are you don't, stumbling? don't, don't take away your Latin roots, brother. Don't, don't you do that. Me. Don't you point. Don't let me. the man do that. Don't let the man take away your heritage. God damn it, dude. I. This is the reality. Okay, 
you're never going to be fully gringo because I grew up with a crazy South American dad. So we, a lot of like passion and yelling and crazy shit. So I have definitely, I, I have an affinity to Latin people and Arabs as well. They're very similar. Um, but I, I'm, I can't speak the language. I'm very much have a Toronto influence on my life. My mom's Irish. So I have that Irish side as well. Um, so wow, what a combo. So I'm not, I'm not Latin. I wouldn't say I'm Latin at all. No, I, I, but I mean, my Spanish is good. I can understand if I'm in Spain. I, I after a week, I'd be pretty like I can speak pretty well, and I could get it by, and it's not not a problem. All of this is nonsense until I see your 23 and Me results. All right, what are we talking about? Yeah, I'd like to know. I'd like to know where because my the Oporto. I don't know where. Uh, I I suspect it's Portuguese, but we don't know. That's what I was gonna say. Could be Portuguese. Yeah, maybe so, ask the face. Maybe ask the face guy. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he like, he, they, 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 if he, if he crushes those twenty three and me results, I'm selling everything and fucking, I'm, I'm. It's like that scene of Wolf of Wall Street. I'm coming and working for that fucking guy. If he gets like seventy eight percent fucking East Germany and fucking twelve percent, I don't know Scandinavia. It's done. It's a wrap. Yeah, I'm he, taking he, that he, job. He, can, he, you know what's funny though? I know you're kidding, but he can sort of like say that you're from this background. He can kind. of see that in your face but what you should take man is you should do a uh and i can get it for you like comp just because like you know but do a oh do a, shit get a face reading session from them and you'll All be right. like, you'll be you'll be fascinated. i'm down you'll be fascinated i'm not tr- I'm, I'm joking more for the jokes but i'm fucking i'm down 100 percent to try it yeah yeah because you will uh yeah, you'll be you'll be interested, man. You'll see, and then once you start to learn, like the if you ever would start to learn the basics, you can kind of see it on people, and you're like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Like I love to see like what I already kind of if there's anything that I already know because like like I said, I've talked to a lot of people, not just because of the podcast. Sure, the podcast has helped, yeah, to sh- give me a very diverse set of human beings that I've talked to, but also because now that I live here, like I'm very I would like things social, so I'm I'm meeting like. At one point, I was meeting like 100 people a month, like new people, just like starting conversations. Like it's wild how many people I've met over the past like six months. That's good, man. That's good. You know, what, what I can see about you is like you can get like a bit emotional. You can get a bit emotional when with certain situations. and uh, For sure. And uh, But you, I think when it comes to like um, – when it comes to like uh, thinking – and higher thoughts you could be more like even keeled but when it comes to more like maybe uh relationship things you can get more emotional with that sort of stuff it's pretty spot on yeah i mean that's, that spot on? i think that's that's pretty fair yeah yeah so but that's very very from what i can see now is like i can say that but i mean you you, you know we all we'll have find that. out once you have some cervezas uh, right here in spain when you i don't drink man. Visit. well you drink water i love coffee <laughs> i t- Never heard of it. <laughs> Never. <laughs> you love coffee? No fucking way. Me too. Do you like pizza as well? Some people don't like coffee. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I there's very there's there's very few and far between. I aren't, the, aren't the coffee shops there packed at like seven p.m.? Uh, coffee shops? No, I wouldn't say Spain is known for its coffee. Uh, but regular bars and stuff will like, they start coming out at like 10, 11 PM. Like their last meal is at 11 and they'll arrive at the bar like 1130. Right, right, right. Like there's a bar. I live like right in the center of Valencia. There's a bar, not a flex, just saying, uh, Ooh. there's a bar right next to my apartment. And, uh, one time me and my friend went for like drinks, you know, we got there like 11, 12, like 90% empty. 90% empty. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, fair. It's Tuesday night. Obviously, like, no one's going to be out on a Tuesday night. It is what it is. So, like, me and him, like, oh, we'll just chill, me and you. Let's see what happens. By one o'clock, it was shoulder to shoulder. Wow, wow, yeah. It filled up from 12 to one, shoulder to shoulder, from empty to shoulder to shoulder. And it was mostly Spanish speakers. I love that, man. It was wild. It blew my mind. Like, oh my God. Like, it's like an underground, unspoken rule that, like, if you were a tourist coming here, you would think like, oh, it looks like the nights ended at 12. Like yeah. people don't even do anything here. <laughs> and then literally it's the opposite. Like they just come out later. Dude, I'd go to the club at 2 a.m. when I was there. That was normal. Yeah, that's like normal for them. Like I remember, same thing in Barcelona. When I went to visit Barcelona when I was a bit younger, I think 2019, we went to a club and uh, 
I, I didn't speak any Spanish. I met some nice Mexican girl and we went Ooh. out clubbing together and we got there at very spicy picante, I would even say. Uh, and then we went clubbing at 2 a.m. and like it was half empty. And then at four o'clock is when it started filling up. And then by five, I'm like, OK, this is too much. Like I can't move. It's so crowded. I love that, man. That's fun. It's, weird. it's a weird. It's a different world. It's like it's hard to explain. How um, uh, how old are you? How old do you think I am? You're probably like 30. On the button. Jesus Christ. All right. I might have to start taking that face course. Jesus Christ. This guy's. Yeah. Were you born in the you were born in Serbia, but you grew up in uh, Toronto in Canada? No, no. I was born in Serbia. And then uh, at seven, we moved to Windsor. Windsor, Ontario, baby. Windsor. Home of the Spitfires. And you've been there forever? Till last year. Till October of last year. And then I moved here. And you were working in marketing in Windsor. Like, uh, first five years I was working in electrical engineering. I was working as electrical in automotive. And then I, through like doing my own random shit, I build up a bit of portfolio. I've made some quality videos and I use that as leverage to get a job for companies to do similar stuff for them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're good at like digital marketing. That's why you laughed at my Instagram page. Cause you know what to do. I was immediately looking at him like, my guy, we can get you some help. We can talk to people like, help me a- out, dude. I need to build my yeah. the only thing I have is I'm going to say is like, I have decent content, so that's what's grew in my page. It's not because you have I'm amazing good. content, brother. Don't sell you don't sell yourself short. You have great content. I enjoy a lot of your videos. Thanks, man. Some well, of them get censored because face Instagram is an asshole, but like the ones that don't get censored, censored to pass through the filter. You, you always commented. I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah. If you need it, like a guy, like, I don't know what your budget is, but I have a friend who's looking to like he's been doing my stuff, and he just. He makes really good clips and he's up to date. He's gives me updates like, oh, this clip did well. We're going to try some different tags or like, oh, lately what I've realized the big, we're already in an hour, but uh, sorry if you have to, you have to go. Somewhere. I was just kidding. No. About the stuff but um, the late, late list is, lately the discovery has been with the shorts on YouTube and Instagram is to go even shorter. Like we were doing like 30 to 50, 30 to 60 seconds. Like we were trying to tell a story within a clip and make it really engaging, really interesting. Like, all right, this guy worked on doom, the video game. Why did he work on it? How did he do it? This it's like, it's like too long, too much. So now it's like, keep it between five and 15 seconds, make it interesting. And to the point and almost for, make them forget that they even watched the thing. Yeah. Right. Right. And then they watch it again. So like now some of the clips we're working on, like the only metric that I've noticed I mean, it seems obvious to say it out loud now, but it takes time to learn these things. The only metric that matters is retention time. So it's like how long someone is watching a clip. Right. And if you can make a clip engaging, interesting, maybe even more, maybe confusing, maybe like mysterious enough that it needs to be watched twice and you get over 100% watch time, meaning someone is watching your clip on average more than once, Mm. the algorithm is like, oh, this is good content. Like, let's push this out. Is it true if you're sharing shorts a lot on the YouTube thing, then the longer form landscape videos won't get served up as much on their page? That's a, that's a really like, that's like uh that's something like inside of like Pandora's box. I have no, it's like a black box. I, I have no idea what, what happens. We, I had a, I had a shorts channel just for um, the podcast shorts and we were uploading it on there for like last, I want to say six months and then recently we've transitioned to re-uploading those back on the main channel because now YouTube has a section that's like the big content and then the shorts. So you're like, when you go on someone's channel and you click on their videos, it doesn't look like a clusterfuck. Mm-hmm. Like the shorts are in one place. And so far from what I'm noticing, we've been uploading for the last like couple of weeks. It's, it seems like it doesn't have an effect and we're getting some new subscribers from the shorts. So yeah, that's to me, cool. it seems like it's worth it. I don't know. I don't well, know they're serving up shorts more. I know that, but my friend was like, you should have a shorts page and a long form page because if you start serving up shorts, they don't serve up the other ones as much. So uh, I don't know. I, you're right. Everyone I don't know. has their opinion. No one really knows what's going on. I think the way I started looking at it recently is like, okay, if YouTube is going to be pushing shorts so much, which they are, and they've you know put a designated category now for shorts, now it doesn't mess up your channel. Like I don't see any reason to not upload them. Like if someone enjoys a short, it only gives me a... a a bit of an opportunity for them to maybe go find the real thing. I don't know. Cause there's more, but there's more money in the long form stuff though. But like, I'm not, I mean, I'm looking the money side of this thing is like, that's like so far out of like, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just trying to make the best quality product I can. I'm not really true. true, true. The money will come. It's like anything in life that I've kind of done up to this point. I just believe in something and then I'll just do it until I see 
profit out of it or until I transition, maybe that opens up a new idea. Yeah. So most of your time is designated to these clients you have, eh? These, these uh, freelance clients? Yeah. Yeah. What's the, Pretty much. What's the, the industry, can you say? Uh, it's literally, I found like companies through, um, AngelList. It's usually like small startups. Uh, I work for a crypto company. I'm trying to work with another company that, uh, is working with us business funds. So like work on their socials, work on their YouTube channels. Think of like content strategies, think of like how they can get organic because like companies are at a point now where they're like, yeah, we'd love to get new like people to see our product or whatever, but it costs a lot of money to advertise. Yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. like, well, why don't we just do what like YouTubers are doing? YouTubers are getting like organic views. I'm like, okay, well, if you want to go down that route, you have to make good content. And like, you have to remove yourself a little bit from the brand to be able to do that. So like my goal has always been trying to figure out how to get organic, co- organic views for companies. It's hard. You got to be obviously. consistent, man. It's extremely difficult. And without an, a, those, it's easier for clients because they're niche. They have a certain product that's very easy to grow out of a niche for like a thing like mine, like a podcast, like, I mean, talk about a hyper competitive fucking industry. Like mm. it's really tough. That's I mean, for your stuff, comedy, I don't know, like is comedy the same way when you're doing Instagram videos, there's so many people making funny videos. Yeah. It's oversaturated, man, for sure. And you'll hit a huge pop and then nothing. And then you kind of just like, then you like, I, I had one idea we go, let's just try to get quantity over quality. Cause like, yeah, but then you're like, wait a second, no, because now they might have kind of that was the format like five years ago. It feels like now Instagram and those places are actually favoring stuff that sounds good and kind of has a good look to it. So now it's like shifting. And now I just had a talk with some of my buddies where like, let's just focus on, you know, less quantity and doing better quality. And it's just, you're going back. You're going back and forth and you want to make sure it's still good, but you also don't want to sit there for 17 hours editing something when it's like it gets 200 views right it's such a fine balance but what's the tiktok stuff been like because you have a big following on there but is that would you huge i mean i I honestly just i don't make stuff for tiktok i make short videos and then i put them on every platform right but like you have a significant following on there no ninety thousand or something like that that's pretty good it's okay yeah why it was your link tree not working oh boy buddy uh, it's working it's working Is it not working? Your link tree is not working, but when I click on TikTok, it doesn't take me to your channel. It just takes me to TikTok. <laughs> Dude, are you serious? Cut that, cut that, cut that. No, no, that's funny. Edit that part out. But do uh, Maybe I'm crazy. I clicked on your uh, TikTok and it's not it's not showing up on the... I mean, on Linktree, it just takes me literally to TikTok. No, dude. Well, I clicked that. Look. Yeah, let's see. Let me see it. it has okay, it now click, tic- click TikTok. Where does that take you? It just took me to TikTok. <laughs> Fuck. Dude. <laughs> if there's nothing else I got on the podcast, it's that I got to really <laughs> stick to my stuff. <laughs> Holy shit. Amazing. That, I mean, I don't think we can end on a better note than that. That was beautiful. <laughs> we came full circle. We started talking about that and we ended on like just how poor you are technologically. <laughs> I need help, man. Get me help. I need some like young little upstart who just graduated who's like like wants to do some work, work for free and work 60 hours a week. That's what you need. I'll these fucking but you're not gonna find that from these young bugs. They're not like that. They ain't built like that. I give I'll give them some unless I need someone who's not not English speaking, that would help. <laughs> try try looking into East Asia. I've heard they've got some really good offerings for <laughs> Close to slavery, if that's what you're interested in. That's not close to slavery. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> They're going to look back at this clip like 10 years from now. It's going to be your like Kevin Hart moment. Like Andrew was for seriously con- contemplating slavery for like 15 seconds there. I think yeah. that's good enough to get you canceled in 2045. <laughs> hey, man, it's called an internship. I work for free. What the hell is that? I, I'm with you, bro. I made videos and all this stuff like six years before I made a penny out of it. Yeah, like yeah. these young bucks ain't about that life. No, no, it's definitely changed, man. It's definitely changed. But what are you gonna do, dude? A fun conversation. Um, thank you so much for your time. I'm so happy we finally did this. Yeah, um, that if was you're ever fun, in Spain, you, uh, you have my information. Don't hesitate. What are you working on? What do you want to plug? Where can people go to see you? Eh, it doesn't matter, really, man. <laughs> you're just gonna end it all fucking after this. Fun. Yeah. 
I'm just like massaging a gun. In the <laughs> <laughs> folks, folks, uh, for the ones that are just listening, he's holding a gun to his mouth. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. We might have our first suicide on a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, man, just you know, just keep it real. You know what I mean. Stay in touch, buddy. Well, we'll see if I'm coming out to see you. And uh, and likewise, if you're in Toronto, give me a shout. Beautiful. Thanks for your time. Yeah, man. Stay in touch. All right, buddy.